so excited to show you this. So this is the camera we're going to use tonight, Sony A7S camera, really good low light performance. And then obviously we're going to use a T-ring, take the lens off, put the T-ring on, put it in the telescope, and then we're shooting live stacked images of the night sky. Ooh, fingers are getting cold holding the metal. That's in there. Now I haven't worked out yet how to do it over Wi-Fi, so I'm actually going, apart from dropping things on the floor, so I'm going old school. I haven't worked out how to use the Wi-Fi yet, so I'm going to use a USB cable and connect it to the laptop. I'm now using SharpCap. This is the program that Lawrence showed me how to use when we went to Kenning Heath, went to the Star Party. So I'm going to boot up SharpCap and then we're going to start using the live stack. D drive, make new folder, 2023-0127, live stack. So for all my shooting, we're now going to save all those images and videos into that one folder. Now what I'm going to do is jump over to LiveStack and then we are going to say Cameras, Folder Monitor Camera, I think, I think there we are, Folder Monitor Camera, Browse, to D Drive, there we are, All Images in Selected Folder. Go back to the Cameras Live View, we'll get that better centred, there we are. Take a test shot. The right, camera's now, camera's now taking a little picture. We're taking a 10 second exposure, I say 16,000. Oh, that does look good, doesn't it? Oh, wow. So what I'm going to do now is start to go to interval shooting. Let's go then. I'm now going to take I don't know, five minutes worth of 10 second exposures and then sharp cap is going to then stack them one on top of the other and the beauty of that is that the noise averages out over the image but the signal will build up and we'll just get a cleaner and cleaner image. That should just come through soon, there we go, one quite grainy dark image. Now the second one's going to appear. So frame stacked is one. Right. So the clever bit is about live stack is you can move the sliders around. That is stunning, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. That is absolutely stunning. Absolutely blows me away. Such a change to my observing. So that's, that's, that's done 15 five second exposures now. So what's that? 15 times five, 75 seconds of exposures. But apart from playing with the sliders, I'm not actually done anything, you know, I've not done, I haven't got any darts, I've got no flats, no bias, it's literally just straight pictures, straight off the sensor, into live stack, sorry, into um, five, uh, blah, 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 into sharp cap. So I've had a good play around with the, the histograms. If anyone's got any advice on that, then do let us know. Oh, what a night, have got this beautiful crescent moon just setting behind the trees over there. Mars and the Pleiades are right overhead. And look at that, absolutely amazing, this blows me away this. So that's the Orion Nebula done, what we're going to do now is swing across to another beautiful nebula. This is kind of a weird one, it's called Hubble's Variable Nebula. And it's a piece of nebulosity, it's actually lit 
by a variable style protose style called R monoceratis monoceratis. Anyway, a variable star. And the light from this star fluctuates, it varies with time, it's still quite young, it's still forming. And that actually varies the brightness that's on the nebula. It's a beautiful object, just in its own right, and scientifically quite interesting. So we'll swing around and we'll go and find this object. So this is why I'm using this as Sky Safari. So I'm using this as amazing. I've got planetarium software that control on my phone. I've got planetarium software on my phone that controls the telescope. Go to the telescope swings around and the software with it. Just with the digital camera, I'm observing a variable nebula here right out in the depths of the Milky Way. And I'm absolutely bloody frozen and it's starting to cloud over. So I'll try and capture some more pictures and see how we get on. So I hope you enjoyed that video as much as I did. It was a wonderful observing night. We saw that crater Theophilus on the, on the first quarter moon before it started setting. And then to look at the surface features on Mars before then resolving stars, resolving color, resolving all that detailed nebulosity. First of all, in the Orion Nebula in M42 and then swinging across to Hubble's Variable Nebula as well. That beautiful fan shaped, absolutely wonderful. Um, so as you can see behind me, I have put an F6.3 focal reducer onto the Schmidt Cassegrain, onto the telescope, and that'll give me a wider field of view. So I'm looking forward to testing that out when we next have a clear night. So remember, don't forget to subscribe. And we're not charging any Patreon accounts. We're not asking you to buy us coffees or send us money. If you, hit the, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we can, that'll allow YouTube to bring the video to more people.